Hello. Woo. Woo. So one of the main reasons that I um, transferred uh, from primarily doing the podcast to primarily doing videos was so I could critically examine PBS kids shows. Just kidding. No, one of the main reasons that I switched from primarily doing the podcast to primarily doing these YouTube videos is because I can share much more content when I do these videos. I mean, it's just, it's very easy for me to, um, <laughs> go into my car and, um, you know, talk about these concepts than to record a podcast episode, which is just more thought out. And then the editing is much more involved, um, than these videos, which basically I can, you know, put on YouTube an hour or two or whenever I want after I record them. It's very, very easy, right? And so I can share a ton of information via these videos. The issue is that YouTube being social media, um, you know, and I've talked about this before, we have all of us, including myself, have such a tendency to like watch new videos, right? And we don't necessarily go back through the old ones. We're more likely to do that with something like a podcast. Um, but, you know, I, I, you know, glancing at some of the comments the last couple of days and in general, um, most of the questions people have about like, you know, I've talked about almost all the stuff that people is at, are asking about. And um, usually I've talked about it in the podcast in like a more formal form. And then um, I've also, for most of these subjects, already made videos about it as well. So I really do encourage you if you like these videos, if you're new to the channel, to go back and watch some of my older videos or listen to some of the older podcast episodes um, because I, I really do cover all of this stuff. When we delve into specifics, that's when it tends to be kind of like new information like we've been doing recently with this uh, inner supply uh, you know, series or whatever you want to call it. So with that in mind, today um, I wanted to uh, just really quickly uh, read a little bit from uh, Money is God in Action by Raymond Charles Barker. We were talking about this book earlier, uh, like a week ago. It's a great little guide. Um, and I think, you know, we are getting towards the end of this uh, lengthy series at this point. So I thought that, uh, you know, it could be good to summate with some Barker before we summate with those Joseph Murphy points at the end. So Barker says, you are going to like money because it is God in action. Just think about that for a second. You're going to like money because it's God in action. That's a very powerful statement to make and to consider. You know, we say, God is my supply. That's what that means. Money is God in action. That very powerful Barker says, you are going to use it with wisdom, release it in joy, and know it will return to you increased. Say to yourself, wait a moment. I always have had enough money to meet my needs, and the infinite spirit is not going to stop my income at this point. There is no blockage in the universal system. The universe is always in a state of flux. If there is a block in the flow of money in my life, it must be a temporary human block, which I have within my own consciousness. I now break that block, I accept money, appreciate money, use money, and shall never again be afraid of money. Excuse me, my nose is a little bit runny today. This is a, uh, just so good. Again, we can use this psychological language, but when we use this, this, this just open more spiritual sounding language. It just, it's very powerful for a lot of people, including myself, to hear this. If there's a block in the flow of money in my life, it must be a temporary block, which I simply have within my own consciousness, within my own mind. I'm now breaking that block. I accept money, appreciate money, love money, use money freely, let it flow in and out, and shall never again be afraid of money. The end of this pamphlet is great, too. He's got some great quotes. This is from Chronicles, the Bible. 
Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou rulest over all. And in thy hand is power and might, and in thy hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. That's money being used appropriately. That's loving money, having money as a friend and not as a nemesis. And then uh, there's a couple more really good things at the end of this pamphlet. This is uh, Barker's treatment for money. He, um, he says, I now subconsciously accept this treatment. There is only one creative cause, God. There is only one mind, God. There is only one life, God. There is only one substance, God. This present universe is the glory of God. It is a move, moving, flexible, fluidic creation. It is alive with the life, the abundance, and the richness of God. I abide in prosperity. Mine created me in order that it might act through me. Therefore, I am receptive to its abundance. I am receptive to its circulation in my life in the form of money. Money is God's idea of circulation in my world of finance. I accept this idea completely. I appreciate this idea. I like it. Money being God in action is absolute good. It is wholesome. It is a blessing to man and I am now prospered with it. I have no fear of lack, for I believe that I have plenty of money. It is God's activity in my world. It is God's activity in my bank account. It is God's activity in my investments. It is God's activity in everything to which I lay my hands. This money is flowing. This money is free. I do not attempt to lock it up. I do not put a fence around it. It is God's money. I let it flow in. I let it flow out. As I release it, I know that it comes back to me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I am now free in money. I rejoice in it. I appreciate it, and I thank God for it. I have money forevermore. Amen.